What's happening, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. So, me and my buddy Jamie just got back from a three-day trip fishing walleye in the Detroit River. We had a great time. Now, we didn't put an absolute smackdown on the fish. I wish that we had, but the temperature wasn't quite right. Now, that's not to say that there aren't some boats out there absolutely destroying fish, because there are. We're just not that boat. Now, part of that reason is the guy driving the boat. Me. Now, I have fished the river a handful of times before, I do know it pretty well. This is just the first time I've ever done it running my own boat. It took a little bit of getting used to. Now, there's plenty of guys that can do this all day, every day, with no problems. I'm just not there yet. If you're not used to setting your drift, constantly using your trolling motor to keep your jig vertical, and trying to fish at the same time, not to mention trying to film a YouTube video, it could be a lot to handle. Now, not every trip is without its mishaps. That scared the hell out of me, man. That was not fun at all. I was not genuinely worried. Let me see. Stinger all the way in my finger. And I think it hit a tendon. We did have a few things happen. All that being said, we had a great time. We did catch a handful of fish. Unfortunately, most of the fish were caught off camera. We caught a lot on Saturday, and it was pouring down rain the entire time. And again, my mind was really focused on trying to drive the boat and fish and uh, not so much on filming. That's my bad. But we do have some pretty great footage from the trip. So let's hook up the boat and let's head out to Detroit. raining. The boat broke. Uh, we had a fuel leak. I fixed it with a pair of pliers and uh, a little bit of general know-how. I was a little nervous, I'm not going to lie. Luckily we ran upstream, not downstream, but it's fixed. It's starting to rain. I got to get the cowling back on, but we're out here. We're fishing. That scared the hell out of me. That was not fun at all. I was not genuinely worried. Yeah, so a little explanation about that. So what happened was this gray fuel line that comes from the fuel filter down to my fuel pump popped off right here and was just spraying fuel everywhere. Also, this bolt, I've rebuilt this fuel pump with a buddy of mine. But my buddy is the one who torqued these bolts down and he didn't do a very good job because this bolt had rattled loose and almost fell out. He also insisted that we use zip ties instead of hose clamps like I said we should use and uh, that's why it popped off. So uh, I'm going to be removing these and putting hose clamps in place and torquing my bolts down on my newly rebuilt fuel pump. Here's a quick PSA. You can always take your stuff to a mechanic. You can always get other people to fix stuff for you. And that's fine if you get in over your head. But take some advice. Learn how to do some basic mechanical things yourself. It can save your life or get you out of a sticky situation when you need it most, especially if you're doing stuff in the outdoors. Learn how to work on your own boat. Learn how to work on your own truck, on your own car. Stop calling roadside assistance if you need somebody to change a tire. Learn how to do it yourself. You know, this wasn't all that serious, but at some point, there, something else might happen, and having a set of skills like that just might save your life. So we moved up away from the boat pack of boats a little bit. Uh, we're doing a drift right along uh, what's called Peche Island on the Canada side. Jamie's putting a minnow on. I'm driving the boat. We're marking a good bit of fish. If you don't know how to read a fish finder, uh, any of these little marks that you see, there's little squiggles. All of this red is hard bottom. There's a transducer that shoots sonar down. 
it return, sends a return signal. So this is the bottom you're looking at. And any of these marks up above, these are fish. These are all, most of these, these are all walleye in here. We're gonna get set up in here. We've done this drift before. Uh, and we've done, we haven't done it this trip, uh, but we've done this drift before. And we've done really well in here. So we're in 24 and a half foot of water. And uh, hopefully this one produces. Uh, the last drift didn't do too well. This water's a little calmer. I'm hopeful about this one. Bye bye. Yeah. Something we found out a little bit too late, the hot color right now, black. This is a black one ounce jig head. Uh, I think the color is root beer, they call it. And this is a uh, Motor City Minnow vampire body. And, uh, and make sure you're running a stinger hook. If you don't do this all the time, when you think about how a walleye eats, it's going to come and it's going to hit this bait from the back. If you're not running this stinger hook, the walleye has to eat all of this to get to your hook here. It has to be a really strong bite. So make sure you're running this stinger hook because he's going to come this way. He's going to inhale a lot of water and a lot of times he's not going to get all the way to that hook. But if you're running this stinger hook back here, just have it free floating. This little hook back here is really going to improve your hookup ratio. A little tech tip to keep your stinger hook from riding up your main hook, take an old body plastic, rip off a little piece, and then just thread it right on top. And that's going to keep your stinger hook from riding up on top. Now, if you're also fishing live minnows on top, the minnow will serve the same purpose, or you can thread your minnow on top of your stinger and then put your body bait on top and that'll kind of keep your minnow in place. I've done it both ways. Jamie just picked up a nice couple of walleyes. I gotta change my bait. Real nice walleye. Nice male. I tell he's a male. Cause he got some juice coming out. Because they didn't catch some fish. Hey, do me a favor, water. do okay. it again. All right. Why don't you catch one? I'm working on it. All right, little buddy. I don't want to do your dirty work no more. Have you ever seen that meme before of uh, Tony Soprano? What? There's a meme of Tony Soprano singing Dirty Work. No. And it's uh, about turkey hunting. <laughs> and it's, it's having your buddy, like your expert turkey calling buddy, come in to call in your turkeys because you suck at turkey calling. Yeah. And it's your buddy driving over to you singing that song, going, I don't want to do your dirty work no more. This current's ripping right here. This guy's gonna drift right into that movie. Don't hit it. Don't hit it, big fella. I don't know if you know this about me, Jaime, but uh, I'm a genius. I didn't get him to say about that. I'm always right. Well, you can tell for sure. He's Canadian? Yeah. How can you tell? That's their boot. <laughs> I put in a boot right here. That was not a Canadian accent.
that one right around here, didn't it? Yeah, it was right around here. Let's keep it. Oh! Whee! Good morning. You got it. Everybody sitting in the VRBO, me and Mr. Jamie. Say what's up, Mr. Jamie. What up? And uh, this is what all of you need to do right now. They didn't log out of their account, so right now they are going to subscribe to my channel, just like you need to do. Go ahead, click that button. It's right there. Thank you very much. Right now, let's clean some fish. Walleye are pretty easy to clean. We're going to use an electric, electric fillet knife. So you're going to come in right behind the head, kind of at an angle, come right down to the backbone. Don't go through the backbone. Come down at an angle. Then you just want to follow that line down. So you get to face the tail, don't go all the way through. Skin comes off nice and easy. So if you look right here, uh, you'll see that the bottom of the gill plate is intact. These are yesterday's fish. We didn't bleed these fish. We actually did this intentionally. I actually want to see what the meat difference is when you bleed fish versus when you don't bleed fish. It's just an experiment. Normally we like to bleed our walleye. We only caught four fish yesterday. We figured why not try it, see what the meat difference is. So we're gonna see. You want to bring your rib bones out. You can try and save some belly meat on these smaller fish, sometimes it's a little difficult. You can get a couple rib bones out at a time, or you can get them all. Some people don't like to save the belly meat, but it's pretty simple. Just follow your rib line down and out. You do have a set of pin bones that run the entire length of the filet. I'm going to show you how to take those out too. It's a process called zippering. It's very, very simple to do. If you don't know how to do it, you should learn. It makes your fish eating experience much, much better. You're going to start with your bloodline up. You take your knife, make a slit on either side of the lateral line, just like that. Take your bottom loin and pull. That side comes away clean. Take your top loin, pull. Your bones come out. Top loin is clean. That goes in the trash. So clearly pretty obvious. You're gonna be like, Nick, duh, bleed your fish. So here's one we caught yesterday. We didn't bleed it. You can see, clearly see a lot of blood still uh, along the skin and down along the spine. Here's one Jamie just cleaned. No blood, uh, clearly left. This is one we clipped. Uh, barely any blood left here in the skin. Uh, here's the filet. This one belongs to this guy. A lot of blood left in here. Not much blood left in here. I've eaten both. Both taste fine, but just for aesthetics, Bleed your fish. Takes two seconds, throw them in the live well. Bleed your fish, take good care of meat. All right, so that is gonna do it for this video. I know the footage is kind of all over the place. I know there wasn't a lot of fish catches on camera, but it was still an awesome trip. We had an amazing time, and I was still able to add some walleye fillets to my freezer. And at the end of the day, that's what it's all about anyway. I promise you, the content is only going to get better from here. There are a few things that I am not. I am not the smartest man in the world, I am very clearly not a mechanic, but I am determined as hell, and I am determined to make this the best channel that I possibly can. So genuinely, thank you very, very much for watching. Thank you for liking my videos. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for commenting. It really does mean a lot to me. I love y'all. 
and I'll see you guys on the next one. And hey, if you like fishing content, you should go and watch this video right here.